sure we'll have more coming through, but um, just want to get started. My name is uh, Barbara Martinez Guerrero, and I'm so happy that you are all able to join us this afternoon. Uh, my co-host is Alexandra Ender. I'll let her uh, introduce herself. Uh, let me just close this poll and I am going to share results uh, with everybody as Alexandra introduces herself. Hi everybody, good evening and thank you so much for joining us for this hour um, to learn about and to really help us to develop a sustainability plan for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Uh, as Barbara mentioned, my name is Alexandra and I am the program manager uh, for Dreaming Green. Uh, so this initiative is really through a collaboration between you know, the school district, Dreaming Green and the U University of Miami. Dreaming Green, for those of you that don't know, is a Miami-based nonprofit whose mission is to empower individuals, um, especially youth, to lead in the response to climate change and other environmental challenges facing South Florida. And so we mainly do this through our Green Schools Challenge program, where we provide free environmental education curriculum, as well as teacher training to the K through 12 schools of Miami-Dade and Broward uh, counties. Um, so this sustainability plan really aligns with our mission. So we were very happy to help the district with it. Um, so Barb, if you can go ahead, go to the next slide. So over the next hour, these are the things that we're gonna be covering. Um, in addition to an introduction to the initiative, you'll be hearing from the student teams themselves that have really been working on the goals for this sustainability plan. Afterwards, we'll be asking for your feedback and your input before we vote on a final set of goals that will be um, presented to the school board and the superintendent himself. Um, before you forget to mention, we will be providing community service hours um, for the students that are attending this meeting. So if you are interested in getting those, then please send us an email at info at dreamandgreen.org with your name and the school um, after this event, and then we'll get those letters to you. Um, so before we get started, some things to keep in mind tonight um, The we are going to ask if you keep your cameras off and keep yourself muted unless you are uh, part of the team that is presenting uh, the goals this evening. Uh, please feel free, though, to use the chat to drop questions, comments, anything you'd like to, to talk about. And really in the spirit of this meeting, which is to include, you know, all stakeholders and their ideas, we do ask you to provide positive feedback as well as to be present and engaged throughout this hour. So I will now in, let Barbara take it away, the Executive Director of Dream and Green, so she can kick off this meeting. Great, thank you. Uh, and I will just let this uh, other person in. Perfect. So uh, why are we uh, getting together today? So really there's been a vision uh, started by MDCPS to develop a plan uh, to enhance and empower um, uh, a district-wide culture leading to sustainability. So it's been in the works now for a couple of months and I'm glad to see we have representatives here from MDCPS, um, you know, because ultimately the district uh, is really gonna be taking a look at uh, what this plan and it focus uniquely on our district, on, you know, our, our operations and most importantly, our students. Um, in order to provide achievable and measurable uh, goals to implement for its result. Um, so the mission of the plan is to create these sustainable pillars, which clearly focus the intentions and results around easily identifiable concepts. So the plan is really focusing on SMART goals, which I'll go into in a second for what they mean. And they are really looking for short and long-term timeframes. Now, all of this is in line um, with the 100% clean energy schools resolution that just passed last month um, through the school board. And so we really are seeing um, that our district leaders are really taking um, this uh, into account and really trying to push forward um, how MDCPS can truly serve as a leader uh, in uh, sustainability. 
So who will create this plan? So the sustainability action plan uh, is intended uh, to encompass a full range of district departments, including academics, facilities, maintenance, uh, school and district operations, and of course, uh, our teachers and students. And that's why um, we have you all here today. Um, because we really do want this plan to be inclusive of our community. Uh, the pillars that have been identified uh, are here. And so there are six pillars that uh, the district and the teams have been working on uh, that you'll hear from today. And so they are holistic education, greening, operations, energy conservation, water stewardship, reimagining waste, and healthy and responsible buildings. So who has created the, the goals that you're going to hear about today? Um, it has been with a group of teachers and students that have been involved uh, with the district's facilities department. Uh, and uh, you could see the names of the schools here. So we have Coral Reef, Mast Academy, uh, I, ISPA, uh, International Studies Preparatory Academy, Miami Jackson, South Dade, uh, Coral Gables, and Mast at FIU. Not only have uh, the teachers from those schools um, really been involved in this effort, but, and most importantly, the uh, students. And what they have done, they have gotten together and made um, SMART goals. So here is what SMART goals are. Specific, measurable, attainable, re and relevant. Um, oops, sorry, I apologize for that. And, um, and time bound. So without further ado, because we really want the students to um, really take the lead on this. Uh, what we're gonna ask is as the teams uh, come, if you guys could just unmute yourself, the representative um, that will be sharing the goals. Um, and as we are getting ready, I am just, now that you know uh, a little bit about the pillars, I'm gonna launch another quick poll uh, to see um, what you guys are all exci excited about. Which pillar should Miami-Dade County Public Schools tackle, tackle first? And which one are you most excited to see implemented? Um, so I'm just gonna give a minute for this poll and I wanna see if um, our first group if they can raise their hand, our first group is gonna be holistic education. So either if they can raise their hand or now unmute themselves. And we will just give a minute for everybody to, to see this poll. All right, 15 seconds left everybody to see which of these pillars are seem like we should tackle first. Great, and I'm just gonna share the poll before we move on. So redefining waste. So looking forward to seeing what goals. And so let me have our holistic education team, if you guys can introduce yourself and share with us your goals. Um. Hello, my name is Gabrielle Trujillo and I'm part of the holistic education pillar. And I'm going to be speaking about two of our goals, which um, are the first one and the third one. So the first one is to establish an environmental task force or better known as a green team that includes students, staff and parents that meet quarterly a minimum to evaluate and improve environmental initiatives. So basically we are looking for students that are actually willing to make a change and are actually interested. Um, and our third goal is to organize a community event at least once a year with these teams um, during the first quarter of the school year to discuss school green practices, policies, and goals with students, parents, and staff. Hello everyone, my name is Gabriella and I'm also gonna be presenting a few of the goals here. The first one I wanted to talk about is goal seven, which is providing an environmental science curriculum that is meaningful for students to learn and realistic for teachers to instruct. 
including field studies as a core class to be taken for all high school students. Providing an environmental science curriculum is so necessary and beneficial because once students have that basic environmental knowledge, they can create their own environmental initiatives and get involved within the environmental community, which is so relevant right now. And having field studies as a core class is so essential too because it creates a more interactive way of learning environmental science, which increases interest for the students. The second goal I quickly wanted to talk about is training at least 50% of the staff once a year on topics such as sustainable practices, recycling, food waste, eco-friendly practices, and cleaning procedures. Training at least 50% of the staff basically makes a school more sustainable from the inside. And this would be done by multiple departments and multiple pillars as there is a range of staff to be that can use these sustainable practices. Thank you. Hi, this is Mipe Chavarria. I'm part of the team too. And actually, they, we know that we are short of time. So that's why they just focus on four of the uh, goals. But as you see, we have more than four. Uh, we actually uh, created the goals thinking that education is a requirement to just make the other operation work in a sustainable way, a way. There is no way that we can make, sorry, we can make a, the other pillars work if the people don't know how they have to, to add or what we have to add in that way. So that's why we think that education is an important way. Initial pillars to start action. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, um, Holistic Education team. And we'll get a chance uh, at the end when we get hear the presentations from all of the teams to get feedback on what you think of each of the specific goals for each of the pillars. Um, let's go to Greening Operations. Uh, if the team from Greening Operations that will be presenting the goals can just uh, unmute themselves and share with us. Your goals. Hi everyone. So my name is Amalia, and I'm one of the two students here today from the Green Operations Pillar, uh, along with Chris Vaughn Alexander, our adult guide. Uh, we focus on green operations and transportation goals with emphasis on the relevancy and realistic capabilities of these projects. So we assembled a few goals, such as the ones you see on the screen, which include the greening of school buses, the greening of courtyards, um, decreasing the use of paper, motion sensored switch lights, electric car chargers on school campus, uh, carpooling movements, and a few others. Um, but of those, we will definitely present courtyard greening right after Cristobal can introduce the greening of school buses. So with that, I'll pass it on to him. Okay, uh, hello, my name is Cristobal Munoz, and I'm gonna talk about uh, one of our goals, which is greening transportation. So um, what we want to do is we want to we want to replace 116 of the current diesel buses uh, per year for electric ones, um, and we which will help uh, lower CO2 emissions. And this is extremely important. So it's very pricey mainly because electric buses are a lot more expensive than diesel buses. Um, uh, like the whole project will cost around uh, 212 million dollars and we want to we want to reach a hundred percent electric buses by the year 2030 um, and yeah it's replacing it's every year replacing 116 so every year it'll cost around uh, 23 23 million 200 uh, 23 million and two hundred thousand dollars and uh, yeah, it's extremely important, not only uh, for the environment, but uh, uh, financially. It might be expensive at first, but uh, you see a 80% reduction in energy costs and a 60% reduction in maintenance costs because uh, electric buses don't have as much parts as uh, diesel buses. And yeah, that's basically it. All right, thank you. Uh, so what is so great about the greening of courtyards is that it will unify the entire school community. Uh, we'll be able to wrap um, everyone from the community onto, you know, beautifying the, scamp the campus as well as greening it, which will, you know, be simultaneous. I know myself as a student, I love the 
you know, greener and shaded parts of my own school. With that being said, the entire student body could pitch in and even establish garden clubs or ecological groups for involvement. Uh, the principals and staff could send out emails to the students and parents to gather landscaping company sponsorships because we really want our center goal of the fundraising to come from uh, corporate sponsorships. Uh, beyond that, the sponsorship could also become a mutual beneficial you know, relationship as they receive good word of mouth in which we receive reduced costs. Um, beyond that, it would be a two-year project at minimum, but there is room for flexibility accounting for schools who cannot or do not want to have the opportunity in order to carry out this project. There are just under 400 schools within the uh, county, which means that only half would be able to achieve per year, and we would measure it by uh, square feet of the courtyards. The amount of time needed to receive a sponsorship will also need to be considered as we carry out this project. Thank you. Thank you, team. Um, really comprehensive. And let's move on to our energy conservation team. Hi, my name is Emily Garcia. I'm part of the energy conservation pillar. And uh, okay, so goal number one, providing periodic AC maintenance at all schools and maintaining the AC at a certain temperature. We think this is very important, especially for um, our schools that are here in Miami-Dade, like in the Florida area, because it's very hot. So we need a stable AC system that doesn't like waste a lot of energy. Um, goal number two, making sure all lights are turned off by custodians. Once all students and staff leave the classrooms every day in each classroom in at least 75% of the schools. Goal number three, providing light lighting upgrades to trophers classroom on second switch. These use 0.120 kilowatts each of a total of 0.240 kilowatts, replaced with LED trophers to reduce these two to 0.120 kilowatts. Yes, um, this is very important because uh, light wastes a lot of energy. And if we do not um, switch to more uh, environmentally like eco-friendly um, lights, then a lot of energy is going to be wasted. So yeah, we're making that a priority. Um, yes. All right, um, I'll take it from here. Um, I'm gonna be speaking about goal number four, which is providing cool roofs by pressure cleaning or painting white. Um, and this would be uh, really effective, especially towards the end of the school year, where a lot of buildings, which uh, are sometimes a little bit older than some other school buildings, usually tend to retain a lot of heat inside. So we believe that with this goal, we were able to lessen the heat pressures in the classroom. And for goal number five, which is increasing natural lighting versus using all the lights in the room to reduce um, the use of overhead light, overhead lighting, and encourage closing the windows since a lot of buildings here in Miami-Dade, um, school buildings have really large windows. So we think by using the natural lighting, it reduce the heating and it'll also be an effective way for um, students to be able to continue learning without using um, uh, the overhead lighting. And then finally, for goal number six, which is turning off um, large office equipment such as copiers, computer monitors, um, personal devices of teachers and students, if not using them. Thank you. Thank you, team. Mm, let's go on to our next team. Reimagining waste. Uh, so the team from Reimagining Tape uh, Waste, the floor is yours. Hi, my name is Ellie Reyna. I'm from Mast Academy and I'm part of the Reimagining Waste Pillar. We have a few goals that we've written down. So the first being integrating cafeteria composting in all schools. Um, that's for the reason of just reducing food waste overall because food waste in on in non-aerobic, sorry, food when it composts, in, when it decomposes in non-aerobic um, areas, then it releases methane into the atmosphere. So in composting and reducing cafeteria food waste, um, we can reduce that possibility of methane being released. And kicking plastic out of school, so in the cafeteria, no plastic cutlery, straws, salad clamshells, plastic bottles in the vending machine, 
and just like encouraging more kids to bring their own utensils from home and their own water bottles and just like their own like reusable containers. Philabag Station at every shoreline school. Um, at Mass, we are on the shoreline on the coast. So we have a trail where we have a Philabag Station where we can just pick up a bucket and walk the trail and pick up trash along the way. So that's very, um, for any shoreline school, it's very helpful. And it's just an easy way to make a make any just walk very meaningful. Um, goal number four, allow students to bring their own cutlery to school. This connects to goal number two, where just reducing plastic waste. So when a student brings their own cutlery, they're reducing just like their plastic use by a lot. Because just imagine if like you, if a student brings like a disposable, like single use piece of um, cutlery every single day to school that's new, that's just like a whole, like say if it's every single day, like 365 days a year, whether in school or out of school, um, you can be reducing that and just completely avoid that plastic usage just by bringing your own cutlery and that's by bringing it to school. So that's another goal. Um, goal number five, encourage schools to be surf riders certified as an ocean friendly cafeteria. Um, surf Rider is a very awesome organization that has these certifications that allow for just like certain things like, you know, reducing the plastic and um, reducing just like plastic waste overall or just like single use plastic waste um, to be an ocean friendly cafeteria. Just like, yeah, um, enforcing and improving school recycling program. Um, at Mass, we do have a recycling program that does reduce um, the plastic usage and it helps keep just the plastic out of our oceans and out of the environment. And yeah, just, yeah. Great, thank you so much, uh, Reimagining uh, Waste. And our next group is our Healthy and Responsible Buildings and uh, they have uh, two slides of goals. So as they present, um, just let me know when to go on to the next slide. Um, so representatives from that team, the floor is yours. Hi, uh, I'm Robert Diaz. And I'm Mariana. And we worked with um, Missy Menes and we're here representing Mass today. Um, we're tackling the building of healthy and responsible buildings. And so just to give some kind of context, like our overarching goal was to improve the construction and inspection of the buildings. This is how we define the issue at hand and to largely improve air quality uh, by 20% uh, by June of 2025. So we wanna get this down pretty much within the next four years. Um, just to kind of give some more context on the state of buildings currently. So uh, we ran the data uh, we also found some studies and we found out that the average age of buildings in MDCPS is around 42 years old. And uh, the current distribution kind of shows that around 50% of the buildings are 40 years or over and 34% are 50 years or older. So um, we're definitely like an older school district. And the EPA says that after 40 years, uh, that's really the time period that a school building starts to rapidly deteriorate if it's not properly maintained. So, um, the buildings in the school system are like generally old. Uh, they don't really meet the current quality standards. So that's kind of what our goals are meant to propose. So uh, I'm just gonna get right into our first goal. And that was by the end of June, 2026, um, increase the amount of schools designated the Green Apple Distinction, MDCPS. So the Green Apple Distinction currently MAST holds that. And that's why we kind of saw it. But in MDCPS, only three schools have that distinction. And I believe one of them is an elementary school. So um, definitely not like super loaded with students, but uh, we, we mainly wanna get a lot of high schools that have high populations, uh, green apple distinctions. And the main reason for this is just because they have a pretty systematic approach to how to get the distinction. Um, there's definitely like a lot of things you have to qualify for. Uh, I know you have to have like uh, certain emission rates and like energy usage. So um, that's just like a pretty good framework and is like a third party that I felt like is a good way. And so our, our like goal, our tentative goal that we had was increasing by 230%, which seems like this giant percentage, but really it's just like from the current three schools to seven schools. Uh, we just saw that as being the most attainable goal, you know, following that smart principles. But obviously we're, we're hopeful to get as many as possible, but right now just 230. 
Um, the second goal is to create a sustainability team by 2022 um, at each school to carry out individual surveys to check on the CO2 testing and other checks um, for, at each individual school. And we just started doing that at Mass this year, but we would like by 2022 to implement that in every school so we get an idea of the CO2 levels and the air quality of the buildings inside. Um, from each school to make it more personal and more accurate. For goal three, we wanted to sort of uh, cement a district-wide IAQ management program and IAQ stands for indoor air quality. Um, by June, 2022, this is kind of like a pressing matter. So we chose a closer date for that. Um, we wanted to largely base, again, using a third party tool, uh, these goals on the EPA's official indoor air quality tools for schools. It's just like a great guide that's already out there. There's really no need to like reinvent the wheel. Um, and one of the biggest things is kind of learning from other school districts. So um, one school district, for example, I know a school district in Colorado uh, implemented the EPA's guides and they had amazing results. Like, cause when you look at the statistics, air quality is kind of related to everything. It's related to absenteeism, like showing up to school more, doing better on test results, you know, uh, it has a lot of perverse effects. So um, I think studying other school districts that have successfully implemented this and seeing how the results have been beneficial is a great way to kind of like encourage the school district to do that and have a model to follow. The next goal is to commit to CO2 testing regularly, which be six months like every six months in a year and um they want to we would like to set um co2 standards to 1100 um ppm per classroom to carefully monitor those levels and if the co2 should reach the limit by 300 um ppm we would um, implement um performance checks um to ventilate and attempt to determine the, the case of why the PPM has been rising. Um, yes, so then another one of our goals is that by the end of June, 2024, we essentially wanted to commit to integrating steel into the future construction of infrastructure. So this is also backed by research, essentially uh, taking a look at all the different infrastructure materials. Uh, steel was one of the only ones that was 100% recyclable and is currently recycled for the most part. I think right, right now, 86% of steel in the US is recycled. So on top of that, it requires little maintenance. And uh, we just kind of saw this as a great way of, you know, making the actual construction part of the buildings sustainable. And then by the end of June of 2023, we'd like to train um, staff at each school to recognize the health risks um, that come with um, higher air quality and um, lower air quality in the buildings and provide them with an outlet um, to be able to report them to improve the air quality at each school. We'd also like to train uh, students and faculty um, and to let them know on their role because they play a really big role in improving the air quality at the school. So we'd like um, to train them and have educational courses in collaboration with MBCPS's um, environmental chair and district professionals, as well as relaying the existence of the aforementioned um, sustainability, like what I said before about the sustainability team, we'd like to implement that in each schools. Yes, so then our next goal is creating a robust air particulate cleaning system. And uh, so our next three goals kind of seem to overlap a little bit, but as Mari's gonna talk about, and then I'll talk about with goal nine, uh, there's actually some important distinctions to be made. Uh, this first one is just that uh, we want a robust air particulate cleaning system by the end of June, 2023. So um, one of the biggest factors to indoor air pollution is lack of cleanliness. Um, and like poor building hygiene. So regularly cleaning is a um, pretty satisfactory solution to this. It's easy, um, not extremely costly. Of course, easy relative to the school. Obviously, if a school has four buildings, that's gonna be pretty exhaustive. But um, 
since it's already being cleaned, you know, there, this is more of just like an add on to the already uh, janitorial staff, uh, just causing like just cleaning of the dust mites um, that can cause allergens, as well as, uh, you know, a little bit sweeping and vacuuming. These are things that if like implemented very carefully can significantly reduce uh, indoor air pollution, which of course, as I talked about before, has a lot of benefits. Um, goal eight is to change the AC, the AC filters every six months. And so that's to filter out any um, pollutants that can be chopped inside of the filters. Um, Cause since they filter the air, they, they could also hold um, pollutants that will then harm it like the students and the environment of the school by bringing in allergens and like just chopping them all in there so we would like to implement um new filters and switching the switching out of the filters um by the end of 2022. Yeah, so as Maddie explained um we want to like explicitly differentiate between regularly cleaning in general uh changing of the AC filters and as well as uh replacement of the AC filters. So optimally, uh, goal eight would be implemented regardless, uh, but goal nine is implemented first. So right now, MERV 13 filters uh, are the most common place filters used in school, but they only for, uh, filter out about 50% of fine ultrafine particles, which is not very good. You know, those rates could definitely be uh, higher. But uh, switching to MERV 16 filters uh, can allow the air to remove up to 95%, which is insane. That's like really good. Um, and we, we saw this as something that should be done, you know, first. Uh, it should be implemented by the end of June 2023, just due to the large amount of schools in the district. But uh, definitely something that we want to see happening. Yeah, that's it for our filter, uh, for our goals. So thank you for your time. Thank you, team. And uh, we are going to move on to our water stewardship team. Um, so representatives, if you'd like to share with us, um, we have some goals here and we will add additional goals um, onto our Jamboard, which will go after this activity. So the floor is yours, water stewardship. So hello, I'm Emily Gonzalez and I am representing Coral Reef High School and we took on the water stewardship pillar. So our first goal mainly consists of individuals who be monitoring water usage and if there's any irregular um, consumption of water every month. And if there were, there will be a designated team which will come to our school buildings and check if there's any leaks. Since that's usually a huge problem, which it happens to a lot of people, even at home, which I've experienced myself, we, our water bill went super high up and the amount of water released, and then we realized it was a leak. So this could be one of the contributions why there's a very high um, consumption of water. And if we were to have a team to inspect the buildings, there was any irregular um, consumption, then it would solve the issue. The second goal consists of at least providing one rain barrel to every school, and they could use it to distribute water on their school grounds, such as their grass and gardens. Many schools like ours, we have a garden, a pretty decent sized garden, and it requires a huge number of water to daily and agri-science students are the ones in charge of it. And they don't really have a proper irrigation system, which that results in having an unnecessary amount of water used in our garden. So if we were to use a more sustainable method, which is using one rain barrel or more, it could reduce the amount of water consumed from our sources. And also goal three, which is one of our biggest concerns we have is water fixtures in the school bathrooms. Usually my school, and I believe many other public schools, um, we have the tap water faucets, which is you have to hold one hand, wash one hand and then the other one. And that just loses a lot of unnecessary water. So if we were to implement funds for sensor sink faucets, that will help a lot in reducing the amount of water consumptions and also by providing high efficiency toilets in our bathrooms. So hopefully by the, this following year, we could have funds enough to at least have half of the schools with sensor sink faucets. And then the following year, all schools are full with sensor sink faucets, since I believe they're very expensive. They're usually from 300 to $400. So it's, it's a lot of planning and determining the amount of we could have in the bathrooms. 
Also, some other goals that aren't in the slide would be encourage students to bring in their own water bottles so there is less reliability on the water fountains. And I believe a lot of water fountains, usually the water is too hot or what we all students love it's when it's cold, but it's a lot better in encouraging students to bring in their water bottles. And we could even at the beginning of the years for physical education classes, we can provide um, funds to give them water bottles so students can use it throughout the year. And then that will, re that will make them rely less on the water fountains. And most importantly, um, we would like to have clubs, like student um, clubs that would focus on the water problems in every school. And then that's when they could send out surveys or have club meetings with the whole school where they could educate the, the problems and different solutions so there is less issues on the water consumption yearly. So that's all for the water stewardship goals. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before moving on to the next activity, I just want to say that it is amazing to hear all the goals uh, and you could tell the amount of work that um, these students have put in to put these goals together. Um, they are definitely very thoughtful, um, very researched, and um, it was impressive as they were coming in to see. And so because we want this to be um, to get your feedback and to give everybody an opportunity uh, to, to, to tell us how they feel, um, maybe which goal they think, you know, you would edit, um, you know, how can you help uh, your school reach that goal or what other goals you would add. Um, we have a Jamboard uh, interactive activity. And so we're going to put in the chat um, the link to this and it's already on there. Um, what we're going to do too is uh, just because I know some teams uh, would like to add a little bit more um, on how they come back uh, on their goals, we can also have an opportunity for those team members to add to the goals um, that they had. So uh, if everybody, I'm going to stop sharing my screen for a second, and then I'm going to share uh, the Jamboard. And as soon as you're able to go on that link, we can all see um, as that is going on. Uh, again, you can also put your general feedback on, your, on the chat. Uh, I know that there were... Um, some chats going back and all of the goals are here and you should be able to just scroll along um, and so if you don't have a, you know a specific idea about one goal but you have about the others um, we are more than happy um, this is what we want you all to to give us a uh, feedback and so um, you know, you can do the easiest way, I would say, is to write a little sticky note and then you'll be able to um, type a little bit easier. <laughs> uh, and so with the, the holistic education team, are, is there anything else as people are looking um, and exploring the goals? And I'll put the goals back up um, that you would like to share with everyone as we are going through. And I'm gonna put the holistic team goals back up. And I think something else to keep in mind is that we've seen some overlap in some of the pillars um, I know specifically, you know, for holistic education, I can see here on the Jamboard that they're talking about green apple, green ribbon designated schools, and also the, the greening operations. The last team, the second to last team that went had also talked about increasing the amount of uh, green apple designated schools. Um, so maybe we'll also need to figure out, you know, where does, where should that um, really focus on? Does it belong under education? Um, or does it belong under greening operation or um, green building? So with holistic education, uh, any team members would like to add any thoughts? 
screening operations. Um, any of the team members from that that would like to add more to um, sorry. their thoughts? Um, sorry, I, I was for the holistic education. Sure. Thank you. I just wanted to say, um, I want to speak a little bit more on the environmental science curriculum, just trying to add and emphasize how we want your opinions on how to go about this. Because as we know, this is what you are going to hopefully be learning. And field studies, just to clarify a little bit, is an interactive version of environmental science course, which basically would be part of the curriculum. So you guys would have more interactive lessons and we wanted your opinion to see if this would be an effective way. And in, on any of the other goals, we also wanted um, to make sure to get your input. So that's it. Thank you. Would it be fine if I ask a question to you, Gabrielle? I'm not sure of the point. Sure. Yes, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was wondering if uh, like field studies includes like like field trips to like uh, national parks, for example, stuff like that, or is it more just like labs and such? Field studies includes a range of things. Yeah, field trips too, um, because I think the best way to learn is interactive. So you definitely have field trips. For example, we have the ocean in Miami. So we can learn a bit, a bit of oceanography by going to um, sanctuaries in Miami. There are so many different things you can do. So yeah, field trips would definitely be a part of it and also labs. So it's completely up to the students and that's why we want our input on what you guys would be most interested on. Any other questions? Mm, just one more. I I just want to I just want to, to show you that at the end, uh, some of the students were talking about training or uh, educating on their specific practices. That's what we were trying to do: holistic education. Just trying to train or to educate some way all members, so not only students, also teachers, also staff, or in, and when we say staff, it's including custodial staff, uh, cafeteria staff, you know, everyone, even the community, the parents, the people that are not at school, but are part of the school district in some way. So education is just trying to reach everybody, trying to involve everybody, because if we make the people understand why it's important and how they can make a difference, then the other pillars will be working. Great. Greening operations, would you like to add as we are getting, um, you know, feedback from the participants today? Yes, thank you very much. Um, we only spoke about two of the six goals uh, because we're concerned about the timing. But um, just to mention that goal number three is to decrease the amount of paper the district uses every year through the uh, greater digitization of the learning and the delivery. That's a behavior thing. Um, a lot of uh, teachers are used to using a lot of paper, so it would entail an educational program for that to happen, uh, along with more digital resources, of course. So that's goal number three. Goal number four, uh, decrease the use of energy through implementation of district-wide program for the substitution of light switches for motion sensor. It has come to our attention that uh, only part of the schools have motion sensor and that really can save a lot of energy, of course, because you don't have to rely on people remembering to turn the switch off. So that's goal number four. Then goal number five, and that's another very interesting goal, we think, is to devise a program to install car chargers in schools. And in, in partnership with a company uh, that might uh, be interested in owning the car chargers after a certain period. If you think that we have about 400 schools um, in the district, if you put a two car chargers for school, that means that you can have 800 car chargers uh, functioning in schools. And that would be a great incentive for staff and teachers to switch to electric mobility. So that is a, we think a very much, a, quite a, a doable uh, uh, goal and, uh, and, um, and we're excited to talk about it. And finally, goal number six, 
is to decrease the number of student, teacher, and staff commuting miles to school through the design and the promotion of a carpooling app so that people can team up with other people uh, as they go to e school. You know, many times we don't know exactly who lives close to us and, uh, and, um, and, and for those who wish to participate in the program, there will be an app for that and you could, you know, enlist yourself and uh, decrease the miles to and from school every day. Thank you. Thank you. The next team, Energy Conservation, if you guys would like to add anything else as we are receiving feedback. How are you? Good evening. Um, my name is Mr. Godinez from South Day. No, we thank you. We, we saw the comments about the solar power. So um, when we got together with the students, we were just looking at like um, measurable goals that could be implemented, in, implemented like maybe immediately for the next school year. But we did talk about that. Um, we were researching what other um, districts around the, you know, the nation were doing. And, you know, it's a, it's, it's a good idea. So that would take more than, you know, it would be like, you know, we would need districts to initiate that. So like, you know, it's not just some schools in, in the district, it would have to be like a, a program where, where all the schools are part of it. And, and I like what somebody had said earlier, a lot of these pillars kind of, we work together um, a lot of it is like education. And I just want to mention on the teacher end um, to ensure that we include um, all teachers. Because like, for example, I'm the lead um, technology teacher in my school and I work with the science teacher. And together we're making, um, and with our students, we're making an effort to, to improve the community. But no, I was looking, I just wanted to mention that because I am looking at the Jamboard and we appreciate all your comments. Thank you, Mr. Godinez. Reimagining Waste Team, anything else you'd like to add? How about our Healthy and Responsible Buildings Team? Um, I think, I don't know, I think we spoke for a while. I'm sorry, I, I didn't, I'm sorry about the time limit, guys. Um, we totally went over, we were blabbering a little bit. But um, if, if anyone has any questions, we're happy to field them. No problem. Uh, I, don't, I don't have any questions for you all. I'm just blown away by the work that you, you guys have done. I'm, I'm so proud and, and hopeful for the future with you guys on board. Uh, <laughs> many of these goals are certainly achievable. Uh, I, I'm, I'm really glad to see that you thought about, well, when can this happen? making it timely. Uh, things just sit around unless there's a, a clock ticking so that you know you need to take action. So I applaud you all. I know that Ben was, must be uh, jumping for joy and, and his initiative to get all of this started. And, and I'm really impressed at the results that I'm seeing. Uh, I have just finished discussing with uh, uh, some of the upper members of staff here at MDCPS regarding the superintendent's a strategic plan. And these initiatives certainly dovetail right into that because three of the main uh, uh, goals that he has established for uh, uh, creating sustainable uh, practices within the district uh, include water stewardship and reducing energy consumption and diverting waste. So all of these ideas, I am sure, will be implemented in one level or another. And, and the fact that you guys are leading the charge gives me great hope that uh, we're gonna be successful in this. So I'm, I'm on board and I applaud you guys. Fantastic job. Mr. Laventier, do you wanna introduce yourself to uh, the oh, our I'm, guests? I'm the, um, <laughs> I'm the administrative director for the Office of Design and Sustainability at the school board. Uh, the title in sustainability is kind of misleading in that uh, we focus on sustainability, but that is just a recent addition to this office. So uh, we're learning right along with you uh, and uh, we'll be supporting your efforts. And uh, again, I cannot thank Ben Weinstein enough because he lives and breathes and has such passion for, for this that uh, you can't help but become contagious and uh, uh, infected by it, really. So uh, again, I... Kudos to Ben, kudos to you guys, uh, the whole team. 
from all these um, schools. And um, I, and the, the energy is just through the roof from what I've seen. I mean, we put together a sustainability plan. We have goals, but you guys have got dozens and dozens and great ideas and initiatives and lots of energy. And, and that's just very refreshing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Levinger. And um, just to, before we share uh, the jam board and give everybody a couple more, like a minute or two to put their thoughts, uh, water stewardship team, would you like to add? I know we added a couple of more goals to um, the jam board as well, but if you have any thoughts or anything you'd like to add uh, on how you came up with the, the goals. I saw one of the comments that they made about providing funds. Instead, I think it's a, well, I mean, we experienced it as our academy. We would um, provide fundraising events and we would use that money to buy these water bottles and gifting it to the students, which would be a lot better than waiting on the students to buy the water bottles as merchandise since it's not really, it's like, it's more of a personal choice. If we were to give them the water bottles, they would utilize it more often. And we could use different fundraising events such as snap raise. Like ourselves, we have for two months, we use snap raise and we gained up for the Academy of Finance $15,000. And imagine if the whole school was involved in that. And it's just, it's, it's just, there's so many different possibilities in gaining um, funds so we can implement different ideas. And even for the sensor um, faucets, it's very expensive. So we just have to raise a lot of money for that. And the water filters is a great idea. That is something huge in many schools. And then, yeah, that's all I wanted to add. Thank you, guys. Great. Thank you, Emily. And um, just following up and some of the other comments that people are putting up and some questions. Thank you all for adding these. Um, and again, we're just going to we're going to leave this open for a little bit just so everybody gets a chance to really um, provide feedback on their goals. And we have some general comments if you would like to leave them here. And so for our last activity, as we move uh, forward and kind of, we want to present all of these ideas and I'm sure we will add a little bit uh, more, but we want you guys to, to vote on what you have uh, seen today and on the goals that you think, um, oops, are at the top of your list. So I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna put some polls up to finish up our presentations today. Um, and I'll share those voting results. So um, let's start actually backwards. So with our water stewardship right now, um, we have three goals that you see here. So I am going to launch poll and these will be quick. Um, so everybody just take a minute, take a look at the goals that are on the screen and um, vote. Which one do you think um, is the most important to include in MDCPS's sustainability plan? And I will share the results. I'm just going to go through and give everybody a minute. And what we'll do, we're going to put all of this feedback together. Uh, and Mr. Laventer, you will have a, um, a <laughs> report from us. Uh, with all the polls and all of the uh, Jamboard suggestions and the goals, uh, and we will send that over to awesome. you. Great, and I'm gonna close the poll. I'm gonna share results um, so everybody can see. So goal number three is really popular uh, with everybody. Let's go then to our healthy and responsible building. So I'm gonna be uh, switching between the two screens just uh, because of the amount of goals. So I am going to share the next set, our next poll. So again, just a minute and I'm going to, in about 20 seconds, I will switch over to the next one, to the next screen. And here are 
the other goals. Hey, George. What's up? Great. You have about seven more seconds to get your vote in. Are they processing a waiver request? That's the only way we can. Great. And I'm going to end the poll and I'm going to share results. Goal number eight seems to be very popular. Great. Um, let's go on to our next one. Reimagining waste. So let me pull up the poll, launch poll, and get your votes in. And again, we'll keep the Jamboard uh, live until tomorrow. So maybe as you, you know, you go to sleep, you have a dream about another goal tonight <laughs> that you just want to put an idea or suggestion, please feel free to use that link. All right, 15 more seconds for voting. Great, I'm gonna end poll and share results. Goal number two for sure seems to be top of the list. Great, uh, let's go on to energy conservation, energy conservation, launching poll. Thirty more seconds, everybody, to get your vote in for the top goal. And I know it's hard to choose. Um, and again, and as we've mentioned, there is some overlap with some of the goals. Um, but really, this is just to see where priorities are. And you know, if you only had to choose one, what that would be. Great. Five seconds. Great, I'm gonna end poll. And this is our first tie, I believe. Um, goal three and goal five are tied. Great, and let's move on to greening operations. Our greening operations launch poll, everyone. Thirty more seconds. Great, I'm gonna end poll and share results. Um, this one to me is not surprising. I'm sure it's not surprising to a lot of people. And 
last but not least, let's go to holistic education and launch your poll, our last poll for today. One, and we're gonna end poll. This one was a little bit more divided, but still a clear winner for this one. So everybody can see. So thank you all for coming. Uh, we really appreciate all the hard work the students have done and for all of the participants that uh, came today and gave us feedback um, and the students got a chance to see um, what is gonna happen with their goals and all of this, I'm sure you'll hear more in the coming weeks and months on um, the progress of the sustainability plan. And uh, if you'd like to follow us on social media, we will also be sharing more information as we receive it and we continue to work with the district. Um, and for those of you who are not familiar with us, please check out our website and um, teachers. Our Green Schools Challenge uh, is open. Registration is open for next year. And so there has been a recording. There will be a recording of this. And so students, again, if you would like community service hours, please make sure to uh, email us and we will get that letter out to you immediately. Just tell us what school you are from and um, we can provide that for you. Thank you all for joining us today. Amazing job by the students, amazing job by 